A foot fetish is where feet, legs, stockings, shoes, and socks trigger knocking arousal in a person. People with fetishes become sexually aroused by certain things or specific body parts, such as the feet. Keep watching to learn more about what a fetish is, the science behind it, why people have fetishes, and how to introduce it into a relationship. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Is your favorite sex coach, Gracious Trauma. Today we are talking about foot fetish. This is a highly requested video and plus I've been wanting to do this video for a very long time so I feel like I should educate you guys on what a food fetish is so if you're feeling the topic already do not forget to hit that like button subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell you can leave a comment down there below in the comment section relating to this topic now let's dive straight into this topic what is a food fetish a fetish is when an object or body part triggers knocking arousing fantasies in a person or knocking urge. A foot fetish is where the feet, socks, stockings, shoes, legs are the cause of a person's knocking arousal. Now knowing what a foot fetish or fetish is, the next question is why do people have fetishes so i have four reasons why people could have fetishes which i am going to list out and explain to you guys right now the first one is psychoanalytic theories events occur during a person's childhood causing them to develop fetish the person may fixate on a certain object during childhood which caused them to sexually fixate upon it causing them to see it as a good object. Another thing is that people may regress, becoming aroused by objects or body parts that remind them of their childhood. I don't know if you get my point at this point. Let me explain it in a layman language. Why some people may have fetish, not just food fetish at this point, is that something might have happened in their childhood. Maybe the child must have seen the mom changing clothes, seen how the legs look, or seen the beautiful fixture here. They look so beautiful to the child. He or she starts finding it very attractive and then fixate himself or herself upon that object. So because they've attached so much importance to that particular body part or an object, it triggers arousal in them and they grow up like that and all of a sudden they start having that as a fetish. The second reason why people can have fetish is sexual instinct. Hormones and emotions drive people to imprint their arousal onto certain objects. These hormones allow them to respond to certain stimuli sexually. They are kind of hormones that people have that make them to respond to certain body parts or certain objects sexually. It comes naturally. Like whenever they see this particular body part or this particular object, they have this stimuli, this hormone in them that triggers arousal. So that could be a reason why a person could develop a fetish. The third reason why people can develop fetish is socialization. The way a community socializes may also contribute to the formation of fetishes or fetish in people. Certain communities may place more importance on a certain or a particular body part and sexual practices which may lead to fetishization or fetishization of certain body parts the fourth one is cultural factors communities are either sex positive or sex negative knocking positive communities view knocking as a fun activity whereas the latter only see it as a way to procreate knocking positive communities may contain certain individuals into fetishes people are more likely to engage in knocking activities for purpose 
other than procreation, such as pleasure, fun, or even experimentation. So I'm sure you understand this point. We're a community see knocking activity as a fun fact and not just a way to procreate so they try to make the most to get the most out of knocking so they try to infuse different things try different techniques do different things to get the most out of it now this could bring about certain people or more people having fetish because they see it as a fun stuff so they tend to practice different things even taboo topics so this actually makes some of them to find some body parts or to find some practices interesting because the best way you can understand what you really like or what your body really likes is by experimentation so when they have experimented in some practices they see that this particular body part or these objects or this practice is actually foreign to them. So these instigates or ignites fetish in some of them in that community. Now let's discuss how to put fetish into your relationship. If a person wishes to introduce their foot fetish or any other fetish into their relationship, with their partner, it is important to talk to them first. Being open with a knocking partner about a fetish and answering any questions they may have can provide a bridge into exploring fetishes in a safe and consensual environment. Simple everyday practices such as giving a partner a pedicure or a foot massage could be a way to introduce fetish play into their knocking life. If all partners are comfortable, they can gradually incorporate feet into their knocking activities, such as kissing or sucking the toes, or touching or penetrating genitals with the feet. The most important factor to consider when including fetishes into a relationship or knocking activity is consent making sure that all partners give consent to each activity increases the chances that a person can introduce their fetish successfully into a relationship the summary of the whole thing is a foot fetish is where a person finds feet legs or clothing that covers those areas knockingly arousing sexual theories try to explain why people develop fetishes but there is no clear consensus a variety of reasons likely play a role it is possible to incorporate fetishes into a relationship safely by being open and honest with a partner so with this knowledge you should know that having any particular fetish shouldn't be a taboo topic to talk about or it shouldn't be a taboo act everybody have different things that please them everybody have things that they love everybody have things that arouse them so whatever thing that arouses you it is your personal preference but just make sure that for you to incorporate it into your relationship you have to get consent from your partner it is not something you force the other party to do if they don't find it interesting so having fetish you shouldn't be shy about it that is your person, that is who you are, and that is what arouses you. So you can try and incorporate it into your relationship, but based on consent. I'm guessing there are some words that I use that you might not really understand. Like when I say knocking, I mean sex. So whenever you hear me mention knocking, I mean sex. Whenever you hear me mention kitty, I mean vajay. Whenever you hear me mention joystick, you know what I mean. So should in case you do not understand the terms that I'm using. Guys, this is all that it is for fetish. So this is a highly recommended video. I've had so many people wanting me to talk about it. And I am sure that I've given you enough information about what fetish is. How it can start in an individual and how to incorporate it into a relationship. I'm still your favorite sex coach, Gracious Choma. Leave a comment down there below my comment section if you find this video very helpful. 
or you like me as a person do not forget to hit that like button leave a comment down there below on my comment section let's keep talking about food fetish till then i'm going to see you in my next video